Okay, so what do we got today? Children of the Night, 1991, directed by Tony Randall, the director of Hellraiser Part 2, and uh, a few other things. Uh, part of the, the trio, I guess, from what I can think of, the trio of Fangoria films. In the early 90s, Fangoria became a premier uh, horror publication, Starlog uh, publication, and, and they started to get into film production, and uh, they co-produced, or it, it looks like some of the people involved with Fangoria, the publishing, uh, Damon, Santo Stefano, and Norman Jacobs, and some other people, they did uh, Severed Ties, uh, Children of the Night, and Mind Warp. Uh, these were three you know, genre films that were again had the you know Fangoria presents banner on the, on the front of them, and uh, they were heavily hyped in the magazine. They were pretty chaste films, you know. They they had some violence and uh, you know special effects. It was like these films were geared toward like special effects, just like what would play in the within the pages of Fangoria and Gorezone magazine. So you had uh, you know Children. Light, which is a vampire movie, Mind Warp, which was kind of like a post-apocalyptic film uh, starring Bruce Campbell and Angus Scrimm. And then Severed Ties, which was this weird, you know, mad scientist severed hand film uh, with with Elkie Summer. And, uh, you know, they all had, you know, pretty... Vi but they were pretty chaste films, you know. I don't think there was any nudity in any three of them. And just rewatching Children of the Night, uh, it, you know, Children of the Night is... Um, I mean, there's there's like maybe two or three F words in the entire film. It's very PG thirteen ish, uh, you know. Very, very. I don't know if it was. I, I yeah, it was rated R. I'm just looking at the IMDb. It was rated R, but it is a very very soft R. It's a very very gentle R. So what's it about? A vampire movie uh, about uh, you know Peter DeLuise, uh, you know of Twenty One Jump Street has to defend Amy Dolan's from a, a small town that is filled with vampires. And uh, Peter DeLuise and Amy Dolans have to, along with Garrett Morris, who is tagging along as the town drunk, Garrett Morris of Saturday Night Live, and The Stuff... He's kind of like playing a stuff-like role of just the kind of the tag-along guy who who provides the uh, at at uh, at certain moments a, a needed bit of exposition uh, or it gets him from A to B. So along so uh, Peter DeLuise, Amy Dolans, and Garrett Morris uh, have to track down the uh, uh, the master vampire and kill the master vampire, and then everybody will be all okay. So it's one of those movies where you gotta kill the master vampire. And then everybody turns back to normal. One of those those types of, of films. So you know the the VHS cover and the DVD cover have this like Kyroscon looking like vampire with the nice teeth, and uh, the, the vampires in the in the Children of the Night film look nothing like that. They're kind of um, they're like the Spike, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Evil Ed vamp uh, vampire from Fright Night. They've got you know the the uh, the big bone cheeks and the 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 you know the cheek and the the forehead appliance and then uh, they've got those the goofy goofy teeth I hate those I hate the way that the, those vampires look they look I think they just look horrible. for me if it doesn't if it doesn't look like you know the the traditional Christopher Lee it's like GTFO. I mean, I just, I hate the, I hate the look, especially I hate the teeth when there's like five or six teeth where they don't look like a van, they, they look like, they look like some kind of aquatic animal or something. Parts of this, this film, the, the, the vampire lore it follows are, are kind of traditional, you know, the fact that they're staying out of sunlight and they're not, uh, you know, they're not that crazy about the cross. The originality comes in, in, the, in that this master vampire lives in this kind of underground, aquatic lair, underwater. And he's he's like, uh, it reminded me of Mystics in Bali, the liac. You know, the liac where they can detach their heads and their lungs just kind of follow, float along with them in the night. Uh, these vampires uh, can expel their lungs and it kind of hangs around in the water like a jellyfish and they can breathe through that. So, uh, and then there is one vampire who's able to, to uh, 
have this amniotic fluid sac that she has spells from her her mouth. Uh, you know, that's the Karen Black character, and uh, you know, Karen Black's in this. I, I mean, for what is basically an extended cameo, really, it, it seems like most of her scenes take place in one one room. Most of this most of this film takes place in the dark, shot with a very shaky camera, and uh, with shafts of light. I think partially for you know, style. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this film is probably very, very, very low budget. Uh, the idea of a town full of vampires and trying to realize that in a specific budget was probably very ambitious for what for what was what was probably like a two or three million dollar film, very, very low budget direct to video film. Uh, and it's like uh, it seems like there's about five or six different screenwriters uh, credited with the story, and so there might might have been some issues with with the story as well that may have been in flux at certain points. Uh, but I mean, they're they're able to, to pull it off, you know, relatively well. It's a it's a it's a nice time waster, I think. Um, Karen Black, as I said, is the vamp. She is she is probably the highlight of the film. Really, her scenes, who she just lets lets it loose, lets it lets it go, lets it lets it all hang out as this uh, vampire is chained to a bed and and is go- and she has her sol- soliloquy about how this is what she and she really does she she works the makeup she works it I mean she's she has seems to have the energy and vitality of of a woman who's like 20 or 30 years younger. I mean she really. It's it's really a sad thing that she she died uh, so soon. Uh, I remember I I did meet her, but I never asked her about this film. I met her once, and um, at a film screening uh, at the Egyptian many 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 years ago. Well, not many years ago in 2000, 2011, I guess. And uh, or was it 2010? Anyway, <laughs> so Karen Black is is a one reason to watch the film. Peter Deloise is is Peter Deloise. He's he's uh, he he's he's good. He's good. Uh, the vampire makeup, as I said, there's some nice gags, there's some effects, but it's it's rather goofy. I hate the look of the vampires. Amy Dolan's is Amy Dolan's. Uh, you know, she's like uh, Tawny Katane, but younger and more attainable, more kind of down to earth and, uh, you know, middle America. Though Tawny Katane was that, but Amy Dolenz is really, really, really that. And she pulls off a very Amy Dolenzian performance. I don't know if you've seen other Amy Dolan stuff, but she's, she's very Dolenzian in this. And uh, you know one one uh, I loved uh, uh, Amy Dolan's friend in the film who becomes a vampire and then gets kind of the vampire remorse and and uh, decides to uh, go go all out. Uh, is this actress Maya McLaughlin? We we're looking at the IMDb. It doesn't look like she's done much. But uh, I, I thought she was great. She did a little, her little uh, monologue about how being a vampire is not, you know, it's all about hunger and feeding and being around boring people who are alive forever. I, you know, uh, I, I thought she was, that was a nice little little character moment. She has, and she pulls it together. And her, her, her chemistry with Amy Dolan's is, I think, really quite, quite nice. I think you can really get the idea that they're friends. Uh, in, in the film, it, it, it works pretty well. Though I, the plot, as I said, I, I think because there were so many screenwriters, I think the screenplay was probably in flux while the, the thing was being shot. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense in this film. It doesn't make sense how Amy Dolan's is able to escape the vampire, how she's able to stay alive. Um, the, the the whole vampires the, the idea that these this electricity these light anomalies that are kind of following these vampires is kind of at the same time uh, uh, kind of goofy and uh, but also kind of interesting and uh, or, original so there's some original and interesting touches the idea of the aquatic zombies which I think was really I remember really being played out in the uh, the Fangoria articles of, uh, of this film, which I read voraciously as a young kid, and the the, the pictures of the vampires. I always that milk milkman vampire. I hate him. I hate the teeth. I just hate it. You know that. So, but the film is otherwise a nice low budget film that really uh, is a is a good little time waster. Uh, a film designed for the cable of the 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 early 90s or the direct to video, the VHS. 
but I, I think it, my interest in it is the, you know, the, the you know, uh, the, 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 the vampire makeup, you know, good, but in a way, but if, if you like that kind of spike, you know, Buffy, evil Ed types, five billion teeth, I, I don't like it. It, it. To me, it doesn't, doesn't look classic enough. Well, this film, but it is better than Return to Salem's Lot. It's just, it's a little bit better. Salem's Lot is another town of vampires. Um, probably not as good as, as Leif Yonker's Darkness, though. All right, so. And, and in any case, yeah, th- there you go. An, an okay film. An, an enjoyable film. Yeah, and, and you know, w- worth tracking down? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. <laughs>